occupation forces said army warplanes pounded Hamas ruled Gaza early Tuesday in response to Palestinian fire balloon attacks across the border. A Hamas source said these strikes came as visiting Egyptian security officials strived to defuse the latest uptick in violence. The occupation forces linked the airstrikes to explosive and arson balloons launched from the Gaza Strip into the occupied territories. The Hamas source said that the group had held talks with the Egyptian delegation in Gaza on Monday before it left the territory for meetings with the Israelis and the West Bank-based Palestinian Authority. The head of Lebanon's Customs Authority has been formally arrested after being questioned over the massive explosion in Beirut. The investigation is focused on why nearly 3,000 tons of explosive ammonium nitrate was being stored at the city's port. The ignition of the stockpile caused an explosion that tore through the capital, killing at least 180 people and wounding 6,000. 30 people are still missing after the August 4th blast. According to officials, several rockets struck the Afghan capital Tuesday as the country marked the 101st anniversary of its independence. The Interior Ministry spokesman said there were no immediate reports of casualties after the rockets were fired from two vehicles in Kabul. The rockets struck the capital after President Ashraf Ghani participated in an Independence Day ceremony at the presidential palace. Airlines and airports will ask a UN-led task force meeting on Tuesday to recommend countries accept a negative COVID-19 test within 48 hours of travel as an alternative to quarantines that have decimated demand for travel. The industry wants the task force to make the recommendation for passengers traveling from countries with high COVID-19 infection rates when it meets on Tuesday to review guidelines for international travel amid the pandemic. The push for testing comes as the industry's hopes for a recovery were dealt a blow last week when Britain reintroduced quarantines on travelers from France and the Netherlands. South Korea has reported a three-digit increase in coronavirus cases for a fifth day in a row as authorities scramble to trace hundreds of members of a church, congregation and the military lockdown bases to curb new infections. The Korea Centers for Disease Control and Prevention reported 264 new cases as of Monday midnight, two days after their reimposition of stricter social distancing curves in the Seoul metropolitan area. South Korea has been one of the world's coronavirus mitigation success stories, but it has suffered repeated spikes in infections and the total number of cases stood at 15,761, including 306 deaths. The Vice Health Minister said as of Tuesday, at least 383 infections have been linked to Serenagil church members ten of whom were confirmed to have attended anti-government demonstrations over the past two weekends in downtown Seoul. State media on Tuesday quoted Chairman Louis Jing Zhan as saying a potential coronavirus vaccine being developed by a unit of China National Pharmaceutical Group, Sinopharm, could cost no more than 1,000 yuan for two shots. Sinopharm has said its experimental vaccine could be ready for public use by the end of this year. It has entered a late-stage human test in the United Arab Emirates to gather proof of efficacy for final regulatory approvals. Governments and drug makers around the world are in a forensic race to develop a COVID-19 vaccine. More than 200 candidates are in development, including more than 20 in human clinical trials. Prime Minister Jacinda Ardern has denied a claim from U.S. President Donald Trump that New Zealand was experiencing a big surge of COVID-19. President Trump made the call during a trademark speech on Tuesday on the campaign trail in Minnesota ahead of the November's presidential election. An outbreak in Oakland, which currently tallies 70 cases, has prompted Premier Ardern to put the country's biggest city back into lockdown. 
New Zealand has had 1,293 cases of the coronavirus with 22 deaths. Health officials announced just 13 new cases on Tuesday. U.S. President Donald Trump added a trip to Iowa to his Tuesday schedule as his support lives in a swing state that's recovering from a storm, even as it was already suffering the economic effects of COVID-19. President Trump's decision to visit this state days after a trip by Vice President Mike Pence illustrates his concern of a state he won by nine points in 2016 but is now up for grabs in his race with Democrat Joe Biden. Last week, a devastating storm struck Iowa with 100 mile per hour winds, leaving three people dead and scores injured and wiping out millions of acres of corn and soybeans. Chancellor Angela Merkel is wading into the political battle over her succession, potentially giving a boost to the candidate in her own ranks whose bid to replace her has faltered during the pandemic. Chancellor Merkel will attend a cabinet meeting in North Rhine, West Ophelia on Tuesday, chaired by Mr. Armin Laschet, the premier of Germany's most popular state, home to the nation's industrial heartland has stumbled in his effort to seize the leadership of Chancellor's Christian Democratic Union, a role which would make him the front-runner to succeed her as Chancellor when she leaves office after the next election due the fall of 2021. South Korea and the US are set to kick off their annual summertime combined military exercises on Tuesday, with drills to be reduced in scope due to the coronavirus pandemic. The computer simulated combined command post training will start Tuesday and run until August 28. The Joint Chiefs of Staff said in a statement, while comprehensively taking into consideration the COVID-19 situation. The joint exercise was initially scheduled to start Sunday, but the date was pushed back after a South Korean officer who was to take part was diagnosed with COVID-19 on Friday. The pandemic has also prevented a number of American soldiers from coming to South Korea for the drills. Authorities said Tuesday 11 prisoners have been shot dead following a mass jailbreak in Papua New Guinea and 36 others remain on the run. The detainees escaped from Biomo prison in the Pacific nation's second biggest city, Lehi, after rushing a gate when a sick prisoner was being moved for medical treatment. The group overwhelmed a duty officer and attacked him with a knife before running from the prison compound. The Correctional Service Commissioner said 11 prisoners were shot dead by guards and police during attempts to apprehend the group. A 6.6 magnitude earthquake shook the central Philippines on Tuesday, sending residents fleeing their homes and damaging buildings and roads with at least one person killed. The US Geological Survey said the shallow quake struck southeast of Maspe Island in the Bicol region. Police confirmed the man's death. So far, there have been no other reports of casualties, but search and rescue efforts are still underway. The quake struck as the archipelago battles surging numbers of coronavirus infections with more than 164,000 cases and restrictions on movement that vary across the country. The Trump administration is further tightening restrictions on China's Huawei, seeking to strave it of crucial components by cutting off all access to U.S. technology. The Commerce Department's new rules will further block Huawei from accessing chip technology. Washington cut off Huawei's access to U.S. components and technology, including Google's music and other smartphone services last year. Those penalties were tightened in May when the White House barred vendors worldwide from using U.S. technology to produce components for Huawei.